Welcome to the Sacred Fame Podcast. My name is Kasha Rashfal. I'm your host. This is the place where we talk about being seen, known, and paid for being yourself and all the things that that includes, the inner work, the outer work, and everything in between. Today, I want to talk about a quote that I recently heard on a podcast that I love listening to called Joyful Marketing by Simone Soul. She's amazing. Uh, I hope to meet her one day. She's just such a powerhouse and she has so many good things to say. And as I was preparing for the next set of episodes, as I round out this second season, um, when I was listening to her podcast, this quote struck me and she said, the price for s- that we pay for success is courage or courage is the price we pay for success or something like that. And I, I was driving as I was listening and I thought, yes, yes. You know, we, sometimes we think the price that we have to pay for success is effort or time or resources, blood, sweat, tears, all of that stuff. And yes, that can be part of it, but really what it takes to succeed is courage. And one of the things that I've discovered and I've often said, and this is things I work on with my clients, is courage doesn't usually show up until you start taking the steps. At least that's what I found. It it like flies in as you're taking the first step or even the second step, and you might have to do the first step afraid. And then courage comes in and it's like, hey, I'm here. Let's walk together. (laughs) That's when the wind goes into your sails and you catch momentum. The other quote that I love that I think goes hand in hand with this, and this is why I want to talk about this topic today, is from Albus Dumbledore for all of you who are Harry Potter fans. And he says something like, the time will come when you must decide between what's right and what's easy. And of course, in the context of the story, that quote kind of makes sense why the time will come to make that decision. I want to say that the time in each moment is here to decide between doing what's right and what's easy. Now, let's dive into that a little bit. Uh, How do we know what's right and what's easy on a moment by moment basis when we look at ourselves? Now, it's definitely easier to look at other people Um, and say, oh yeah, this is what they should be doing, right? But we have blind spots. And unless we cultivate a deep level of self-awareness on a moment-by-moment basis, um, often we just live from a reactionary place where something comes at you and you just react, you know, whether it's emotionally or or, um, verbally with some sort of behavior. It takes self-awareness and it takes practice in order to respond to something, both out there and in our inner world. And so what is the first thing to inviting A, the courage that it takes to succeed, and B, making that decision between what's right and what's easy? Because what's easy isn't always the best thing. It might feel easier or seem easier in the moment, but then down the road, we're like, oh, I wish I'd done the thing. I wish I'd done the hard thing because it would have taken me down a different road. And sometimes, you know, I, I've seen quotes, you've, you, we've all seen examples of this where if you do the hard things when they're there to be done, eventually the road becomes easier. Whereas if you always do what's easy, the road is often hard ongoing. Learn that the hard way, <laughs> you know, as, as I've learned many things the hard way. And so the, the first thing to cultivating self-awareness is honesty, radical, like brutal fucking honesty okay and that that in itself takes courage to tell yourself um this is the truth of what i'm feeling this is the truth of how i think this is the truth of what i believe it doesn't mean you have to spout your truths all the time or spout whatever you know sometimes i find it's easy to confuse like our truth with our opinion about something uh opinion and truth not the same thing your personal truth takes a degree of self-awareness to discover. Self-awareness and the cultivation of it takes courage, but you've got to start before the courage comes in. It's often very vulnerable to begin cultivating self-awareness because you got to slow down. you got to breathe. you got to have space around you in your thoughts, right? In, in your emotions. And that takes slowing down and honesty. 
And so that could look like when you identify what you're feeling, you know, when you take the time to realize that you're in a reaction to something, it takes time to identify it and then be honest with yourself about it. Wow, I'm so angry right now, or I'm so disappointed, or I'm so afraid, or I'm jealous, or whatever the thing is that you're feeling. Identify it, be honest with it, and then from that place of honesty, you can decide, okay, well, why is that? What's underneath this? Right? And you can do some digging. This is often work we do in my magic sessions uh, because it requires my clients to slow down and become aware and become more aware and embrace what they're feeling. They don't have to accept it. They don't have to be okay with it. You don't have to like the fact that you're angry or disappointed or afraid or whatever. But if you're honest about what it is, it's so much easier to cultivate that self-awareness and then make the decision as to what to do next, right? How to respond next. So honesty is huge, radical honesty. Now, the, the second thing, sort of a subcategory, let's say, of honesty is this idea of doing what's right for yourself versus doing what's right for others. How do we know the difference? And again, context is huge. It depends on sort of where you are in your life um, in terms of your family life, your relationship, your work, perhaps. If you have babies or small children or certain responsibilities that you, you know, cannot not do, then that's going to look different if you're someone whose children have grown or perhaps have even left the home and are doing their own thing. You know, if you're if you have a, a spouse or a partner versus if you are a single person, you know, if you have a business that you run that requires your attention in certain ways versus if you are working for someone else where you can kind of leave your work at work when you go home for the day. So it, it context is important to keep in mind. However, context does not excuse the fact that there's this idea of doing what's right for yourself and doing what's right for others. You are always you should be, you need to be, I'm totally using all these modal operators that, you know, we say we don't should on yourself. However, in this case, to speak English, we need to be on our own priority list. Even if you have small children or babies or, or lots of animals that you take care of or a business that needs your attention, if you don't take care of your own energy, if you don't do what's right for you by resting, by you know, good nutrition, movement, whatever it is that you need, you're going to burn out and then you're not going to be good for anybody, right? Then if you're burnt out, exhausted, potentially chronically ill as a result, you're no good to anybody. And so doing what's right for self must be number one. And that will look different depending on your context, right? So I'm not giving you a formula that you must follow. I'm not saying you should do us do it a certain way no what i'm saying is be honest with yourself about what you need and then do those things you should do those things for yourself so that you can be full and rested and happy and uh take care taken care of because your energy is your number one asset so if that means healing if that means asking for support perhaps even paying someone to support you in some way if you if you have the means it's important self number one and then when you're full when you're rested when you have something to give you give to others and again context matters right so figure out your own formula the second thing that i want to add here is how do you know what's right and what's easy in terms of others and this can again be very much uh, a slippery slope or thin ice so to speak because depending on the energy that you bring to others will change you know how they respond will change how you feel about it when you do what's right versus what's easy it's easy to try to because we have blind spots in ourselves but it's often easier to see what someone else should do it's easy to tell someone you should do this that is not often received very well <laughs> again learn that the hard way i don't like being told what to do um, do you like being told what to do? You know, it's, it's depending on who it's coming from. Right. But when we, when we can choose to support someone, we need to decide, are, why are we doing that? 
because we care about them, because we think they need to be saved, because we think they need to, um, because they, we think they can't do it themselves. No, that's not a good place to do anything. Again, context depends who we're talking about. Are we talking about friends, babies, animals, right? It, context. So keeping that in mind, but if you have a friend or a loved one who is uh, struggling in some way or, uh, you know, at, at work or, or something, check where your energy is coming from before you decide to support that person or help them. Are you doing it out of compassion, out of a place where you know that they are 100% capable and they simply need a hand or they need space held for them so that they can discover and remember their own strength? Or are you doing it out of pity or out of enabling them, creating a codependent relationship? It's, again, honesty, right? All of these things come into play in, in that idea of being courageous to have success, not just in your work, but in your relationships, in your own personal life, in your health, right? Courage. And then that whole idea of what's right and what's easy. And, and that is a moment by moment choice because context changes, circumstances change, our life changes, challenges come up, and then moments of joy and ease come. So when you can have the when you, when you can cultivate the self-awareness to be aware of what the context is in that moment what your needs are in that moment and then go from there and decide okay this is how i'm going to respond i'm not just going to do a knee-jerk reaction like i've always done you will in in the beginning it might be hard and it might feel like really discombobulating but in the end you'll notice things change people will uh, people will adjust. Not everybody will like it, but they will adjust because when you decide, I have courage to pursue my own definition of success, I see myself and this is how I want to be seen in the world. I want to be seen for who I am and I'm, I'm cultivating that awareness. When you decide that and you start to be that, uh, the world adjusts. The world will start to reflect back to you, that inner work, that inner self. So to, to sum up, courage is the price we pay for success. We often have to take the first step afraid. And then courage comes in, depending on the context, right? Context matters. And then what deciding what's right and what's easy is a moment by moment choice. And in all of that, underneath all of that, holding it up is the foundation of radical honesty, where you tell yourself the truth so you can deal with whatever is at hand and then minding the energy with which you support others when you are full when you are rested when your own energy is at capacity your nervous system is regulated you can then support others and hold space from other for others from a space of uh, compassion where you allow everyone to have their ex own experience and you hold the space of their um, their own wholeness, their own enoughness, where you know they're capable. They just may not remember that right now, but you're not doing anything for that person out of pity or to save them. Right? You're not telling them what to do. You're simply holding a space for them to remember what it is that they want to do. Big topic, hey? <laughs> if this landed for you, if you're looking for support around some of these areas in your own life, please reach out. Let's do a magic session, an energy magic session. And on my website, I have a tool called Find Peace in Your Body Now, which are two quick uh, personal energy techniques that you can learn so that when you have things coming up, you know how to get back to your own peace, your own center, and regulate your nervous system in a way that supports you. So you can choose to make decision ra decisions rather than reacting. That's available on my website. I will put the link in the show notes, and I will see you next time.